Do science fiction movies predict our future? Old sci-fi movies show us technologies that resemble cell phones and the internet. We can all agree that those technologies are pretty much mainstream now. Modern sci-fi movies show technologies such as fully autonomous vehicles, more specifically, fully autonomous cars. Are they to be mainstream in the near future? Well, the media sure makes it seem that way. In reality, how old is the concept of an autonomous car, and how long have we been performing research on them? on a three-lane freeway with normal traffic, the capability of making the decision for lane change fully autonomously was shown for the first time. Is that we've been considering autonomous cars since the 1950s, and we've been doing research as early as the early 1980s. So with all the investment from commercial industry and the government, why aren't they mainstream? Well, before I get into reasons why they're not mainstream, I have to define what I even mean by an autonomous car, and more generally, an autonomous system. Now, this definition is by all means non-standard and is used only for the purpose of this talk. That being said, an autonomous system is one that is reactive and has the ability to make safe decisions in the presence of unknown unknowns or unplanned scenarios. So what is an unknown unknown for an autonomous car? Well, it could be drastic changes in weather, drastic changes in road condition, or maybe a combination of failures that was never pre-planned. Now, with that definition being said, why aren't, we, why aren't they here yet? Why aren't autonomous cars mainstream? Well, obviously, there's political and cultural barriers associated with autonomous vehicles. There's also a lack of laws and regulations. But because I'm one of several program officers for the Air Force that funds basic research relevant to autonomous vehicles, I'm going to stress the technical issues. Now, these technical issues require basic and applied research in mathematics, engineering, computer science, and even behavioral science. So some of these technical issues are associated with the suite of sensors and computation used for situational awareness of autonomous vehicles, such as machine vision. Others are associated with safe path planning and predictable control in the presence of unknown unknowns. We still need to have a process of verification for the safety of autonomous vehicle when encountering unknown unknowns. And there's also psychological barriers and things associated with behavioral science that we're completely missing the boat on. So if we have laws and regulations for autonomous vehicles, they have to be driven by the technical issues. Let me give you an example. Imagine there's an accident with an autonomous car, and the company is held liable, let's say. Now, imagine if the accident was caused by a decision that came from a black box that was non-diagnosable. What do you tell the grieving family that we don't know why this decision was made and we're sorry for your loss, and how do you fix the car after the fact? There's also psychological barriers associated with autonomous cars. We are hesitant to give up our sense of control, our false sense of control as humans. I know for me, I don't necessarily agree with the way they're verified for safety when encountering unknown unknowns, Therefore, my psychological barrier would prevent me from driving. Now, this being said, this means that you have to consider the approval of the verification process for safety as well from the people that are going to be using these vehicles. Every autonomous system has a suite of sensors and computation from a computer to go with it for its situational awareness. Example, I'm an autonomous system. I'm a human. I have 576 megapixel resolution eyes, a 20-watt brain computer combined gives me the computation to distinguish images as fast as 13 milliseconds and do it robustly. Machine vision, as a dominant sensor for situational awareness for autonomous cars, takes a lot of computational power and does not, does not classify images robustly. And why, the, why is this important? Well, these are dynamical systems. These are systems that move, OK? So the fee, there's a feedback loop wrapped around them, and they make decisions as they're moving through the environment and as they're taking video and classifying images. If the classification is incorrect, it could be catastrophic and cause an accident, such as the accident of the Tesla crash a couple years ago. Experts in the research area of autonomous vehicles say that we're not even close to being there yet. Also, engineers at the companies that are building these future autonomous vehicles are concerned that the autonomous components are not safe. 
There's also an unseen communication when we drive, something subconscious that we communicate with the other drivers that we don't even know we're doing. They have no way currently of replicating this in autonomous vehicles. And moreover, how do you replicate this for a heterogeneous set of systems, machines and humans driving? So everything I mentioned, you could say, oh, well, that's for commercial use. And maybe you get lucky. You know, maybe, for example, there's been a lot of successes, thousands of hours driven from commercial autonomous cars on the highway. And they probably haven't experienced many unknown unknowns. You definitely hear it about in the news. So what about a military environment? In a military environment, you're in a contested and adversarial environment. It's very likely you're going to experience unknown unknowns. So what is an unknown unknown for an autonomous car in a military environment? Well, it's a pretty dramatic example, right? War is dramatic. In this example, this, this car doesn't have, it has to move faster in the environment. It can't move slow enough so you can make decisions. It doesn't have a safe mode where it can pull over to the side of the road and figure out what to do. And it's sparse data. Contestants environments have sparse data. What data are you going to train on? Are you going to ask the adversary if you can drive by multiple times and gather data so you can go through it again and get it right the, you know, the hundredth time? Come on. It's not realistic. Now, these examples have been for autonomous cars. What about autonomous aircraft? What do we think about the future of autonomous aircraft for the military will be? Well, the chief scientist of the Air Force believes that autonomous aircraft is a much simpler problem than autonomous ground robotics, obviously autonomous trucks, and autonomous cars being a subset of that. But he does make the case that we still don't know how they're going to behave in a contested environment. Now, remember I said contested adversarial environments are the environments that the military deals in. So what would the future of an autonomous aircraft need to deal with? What is an unknown unknown for an autonomous aircraft? So the example I'm going to provide is based off a, a training accident. But you can, you can look at it as something that could happen in a contestant environment with aircraft as, as a fighter jet. So in this example, in 1983, an Israeli F-15 collided with an A-4. In this collision, the right wing Unbeknownst to the pilot and the navigator, it was ripped off the Israeli F-15. Now, the pilot told the navigator to prepare to eject, and his first instinct was to eject. But against that instinct, while they were spiraling towards the ground, he hit the throttle and sped up. Now, in doing this, with erratic stick motions and control, he was able to stabilize the plane and land it. Now, after they both got out of the plane, the navigator told the pilot to look back. And the pilot noticed there was no right wing. He said, if I knew there was no right wing, I surely would have ejected, because every pilot knows you can't fly a plane without a right wing. <laughs> well, this is a pilot. This is an autonomous system driving the plane. What are the future of autonomous systems have to deal with, OK? A couple of things to take from this. Incomplete information. He made a counterintuitive, safe solution that was actually complex. And he did not use historical data. He went against his training data to find this solution. The Air Force has had some recent successes in the demonstration of autonomous aircraft. This example here is of uh, autonomous collision avoidance and autonomous guidance of uh, an F-16. The Army is interested in autonomous swarms. Now think about the complexity and all the things I complained about the last eight minutes for autonomous cars and a single autonomous aircraft. Now imagine taking a number of these, and now their decisions are based off coordination. There's a lot of problems there that are unsolved. So I, I, I painted this grim picture, even though I must mention there, there's quite a bit of recent successes with autonomous cars and even autonomous aircraft. But the reason why I painted this grim picture is to help you understand that, in my opinion, I think there's a lot of technical issues that are still not being fully addressed. We have to balance the hope and the hype, folks. Okay? So when the next generation of scientists and engineers arrives, they're able to make sure that when autonomous vehicles become mainstream, they're safe, predictable, and high-performing.